Hey, g'day guys, it's Adam with another Trip Ready Review. And today, we're gonna to be checking out the 230 Bandit 1100 Swag. We're gonna check out all of its features. We're gonna do a timed setup and pack down. We're gonna go through all of my thoughts after using it on the obligatory three trips. And then we're gonna finish up with some quick fire pros and cons. So stick around, let's get started. Now, a couple of quick things with this video, as always. One, if you're watching it on YouTube, there will be video chapters down below. You can skip ahead at any time. Two, links to the best place I've found to get one of these for yourself if in need will be linked down below as well and three be sure to check out the channel for more trip ready reviews just like this one so in its packed up form you are looking at about 1150 millimeters in length and about 400 millimeters in diameter when it's all rolled up and the good news with the carry bag is it comes with not like some others that you have to pay extra for and it is the same really high quality canvas that's also waterproof that the actual swag's made out of. So you'll have no problems at all when it's in the bag, keeping everything all nice and dry. Some really good carry grab handles on the side here. And the way that it unzips is it unzips all the way down the front here. So that's really good, really high quality zips there as well. Like you can see there, the heavy duty kind and some pretty cool carry handles. The good thing about it opening like that is you can flap the whole lot open, makes it a ton easier to getting your rolled up swag in and out. Now that's about it for the outside though. So I'm keen as to get this thing all set up for you so we can have a proper look. So let's start the clock. Let's switch over to first person mode and get this thing all set up. Right, so first thing we need to do, of course, we need to get out of the bag. So this is the cool thing about those zips and the way the bag works is you can zip it all the way around. We've got these big SBS zips, the heavy duty ones. And the cool thing when you zip it all the way down, there you can see it sort of opens it up and it's nice and easy to get out. So we just pull him out, we'll get our bag a little bit out of the way, put them down. And then as far as our little zips or clips here go, I find the easiest way is you just kind of compress it down and it'll start to work it loose. Just a little bit like that. That's our first one. Out like that. Number two, just keep pushing on the end one there and she comes out nice and easy. And then just roll him out a little bit like that. You'll have a bunch of poles for your spreader bars and then the individual poles itself. What I like to do is get these all set up first and then lay them down in front of you so you can see because one of them is gonna be a little bit shorter and that's for your feet. We can already see which one it is. It's the one on the top we did first there. So this type of swag does have a foot end and a head end. So we're looking for these two here are exactly the same. This is our foot one. Now one of the sides is gonna be sh short, a little bit shorter. Now I've cheated and put a H and an F on here after a few trips. I've been on probably five trips with this swag, I'd say, five, six trips now. So you get kind of a bit used to how to set it up. They just slot in there a little bit like that, get them in the center and then do your corners and just slot in there like that. Pull him down so you're not gonna be snapping poles or anything like that and make sure they're centered. And then put the seconds, your second two in your middle and your feet and your head sorry and then same as before just slide him in get him in the center put him around to your corners that one and that one and same as in the middle we just find our little slot here and in she goes, around she goes, find our middle one in there like that and in there like that. Now at this point you want to get all your clips and she should start taking shape so if you just store the clips on either pole, should be about that three on either side just like that and you can start to see the overall swag taking shape. Now, unfortunately, not dog proof. <laughs> uh, and at our foot end, one, two, and three. Lucky last on the side. And then we're pretty much sorted here. All we need to do now is grab your spreader poles. They go in the little notches here on the end, just like that. 
make sure they're through both. And then you just sort of tighten it like that and latch it down, really nice system. Makes life really easy. And then same on this end, tighten her up. And there you go, stop the clock. That is the 23-0 band at 1100 all set up. You can, depending on your setup and what have you, obviously a couple of little pegs to peg these guys down on the sides to give you that extra airflow. And same down this end as well. So if that's your fancy, you can go ahead and do that. I never peg anything else down, to be honest. I just leave it like that. But you can go to town and do that if you like. So there you go, that's the setup. Let's flick back over to the other camera and check out some of its features. So I've gone ahead and added the extra pegs on the side. Don't hate my pegging skills. The ground is hard as heck here, so don't worry about that. These would normally be in the ground, of course, but there you go. That is the, that is the full setup and normally what the thing looks like. We have these two ports on the sides. All of the zips are all the same, those same really high quality zips that you see throughout, like on the actual bag as well. And these little extra ports and windows on the side I reckon are great because you've got a couple of options. You can have them all the way out and you can roll them all up with the standard sort of roll uh, clips like that, or you can have them out like this. I normally have them just like that because it's excellent. Normally I put a little fan or something in here when it's stinking hot and it just draws with this one open and the one down the other end open. It just really is excellent to draw that cooler air or at least some airflow all the way through. I've had this thing up on Fraser on a trip over there where it was unfortunately bucking down the almost the, the whole week and this thing was out in it almost the whole time and not a drop inside. So canvas quality and what have you is really really good. You can see on the other end we have exactly the same, not quite, well when I say exactly the same, not quite the same sort of deal. Same sort of little vented cowl, if you will, on the end. Same story as the one on the front there as well, is loads of ventilation in the front. Now, if we move on to the swag proper, you can see that one of the best things with this, I reckon from, a, from an airflow perspective, let's get this all opened up for you. A little bit like that. And so you can see that for maximum airflow, it's it's literally almost just, just a roof because you've got openings on both ends and then all four doors going on. It is excellent for that cross breathe. Now, if we have a look inside, everything is all proper midgy meshed. As you can see here, it's a really sort of dense, it's actually quite a heavy duty mesh as well. I've seen some others that are a little bit flimsy and this stuff definitely doesn't feel like that. So that's excellent. We open this guy right up. You can see I've got a pretty heavy duty sleeping bag in here. This is one of the Pilbara's, so it's not the, the thinnest in the world. So excellent that you can leave your decent sized sleeping bag and, and sleeping system inside, roll it all up in there. That's pretty cool. You can see inside, it's a nice thick mattress going on there and that works an absolute treat. I haven't found the need to sort of add anything else. I find that the biggest thing with condensation is just airflow. I always leave these guys open and I find that's that's the key, right? Like if you've got if you've got good ventilation on the inside, you're breathing out hot air. If everything else is cold and you leave, if cold outside, sorry, and you've got everything sealed and no airflow, not allowing any of that moisture in your breath to come out, that's where you're gonna get condensation inside. So the cool thing with the swag is with these little hoods on the ends, you can leave this guy open all night long with the midgy proof, no bugs getting in, but you're letting your airflow out. Now, as far as everything else in here, you can see everything is double stitched and seam sealed, which is excellent. And you've got a really heavy duty PVC bucket floor that does come up on the sides like you can see there. So there's no water getting in anywhere. Now, as far as what else you get inside, you can see that if we're sitting in here, I'll get right down the end. You can see that there's quite a lot of quite a lot of room in here and compared to yeah, a lot of other swags on the market where there's no center ridge pole, it just makes such a difference to the size in here because normally when you're in here, certainly on the cheaper ones, you can see it really coming in on the sides and that gives you that real sense of sort of coffin in my eyes or so that kind of feel where it's just, you've got walls coming in at you. The cool thing with that center ridge pole is it just does wonders for, for space. Normally plenty of room to be able to chuck a little bag down in the corner there. I normally sleep with that in, in, in here as well, particularly if the weather's bad or the car's not nearby. You've got plenty of these little hooks. These are, these are the roll up hooks for the windows and all that sort of stuff. I find them really useful for hanging little lights and that sort of thing. Uh, that sort of thing. You've got two on every window. So you've got plenty of those in here. Now, strangely enough in here, the pockets that you have, there are some, but they're down the feet end. So 
I guess, I, I don't know. I just would have assumed that these would have lived down the front, but no biggie. So you do have a couple of pockets down the end. You can see that there's our, there's our window to the end. So that's kind of what you're getting down the end there. You can see that it's good for that cross ventilation. But overall, that's a bit of a view of the inside of the swag. Now let's move on to some quick fire pros and cons. So pro number one for me is definitely the ridge pole design, the way that you've got the extra one in the middle there and how it just does an excellent job of keeping its shape because of the way the poles are a little bit angular. Pro number two for me is definitely these little end pockets, the little, the window cowls on the sides. That just works an absolute treat. And like I said, been in absolutely disgusting weather, pouring rain with both of these guys open, no condensation inside because of that cross flow. They work really, really well. And pro number three for me is actually to do with this. And that is the bag. I just, I think it's blasphemous for buying a swag and needing to pay for the bag to store it in. And the fact that 230 have one of these included and it's not a crappy one, it's a really good bag made out of the same stuff as your swag itself, so everything's waterproof. And it's oversized, so you're not gonna be fighting to get this thing is in back into the, into the bag like you'll see in a moment. And these grab handles, I just think it's a really good thing that they include this. From a cons perspective, I think that the way that the, the pockets inside, the, it's just a little bit kooky how they're, they're down the foot end and there's nothing up the head end. It'd be excellent if you had up at your head end, you know, on the sides here, if there are some little pockets, you could sort of hang your keys and that sort of stuff. And sort of number two, along the same lines, I know I mentioned there before, you've got all these hooks that are perfect for hanging lanterns and that kind of thing. Be good if there were some dedicated ones right in the middle that were only really short, because I find with these guys, they're sort of hanging down pretty low and you kind of have your, your, your lamp in your face or down at your feet. So that'd be pretty cool as well if there was some little tiny hooks or something you could hang your, hang your little lantern or something like that up at the top using those ridge poles to your advantage. But there you go, that is it for the quick fire pros and cons. I reckon let's flick back over to first person mode. Let's start the clock there once again and let's get this guy all rolled up. So first thing is just get stuck in and I like to close all the windows, at least the mesh. Doesn't have to be the actual walls there itself like the actual canvas windows but the mesh i just find it's helpful to keep them shut because if you're depending on where you're setting up next if it's in the sand or something like that trust me if you've got the windows open you're going to open the thing up and sand's going to get inside your tent anyway from here uh the spreader poles just clip those off in the first instance pop those just to the side and then it's just a matter of banging off all of your clips on the sides here one, two, three, one, two, three. On all of these to take these poles off first. Pretty easy to do, really. Two thumbs makes light work of this anyway. And then once you've got each of those off, just remove them. Just a slight bend, and then it's normally enough. You can just jimmy them out just a little bit like that. Fold them up. Put them to the side, do our head pole here, and number three down the end here, you can just slide him through, just like that. Now it's a matter of sort of just tuck everything in, fold your two ends in, and then it's a, a pack up. So. I normally put the poles sort of halfway, three quarters up. And then a bit of a cheat with this is you wanna find where your ropes are. Ours are already here. Now you wanna pull your swag over them to make sure that they're kind of running up underneath. I'll show you why in a minute. Once you've done that, get these poles, extend them out, at least one of them. I like to normally do two the full length on the sides. Why that is, is because it gives you something to really roll against. And then normally, it's just a grab, roll with your knees, keep it reasonably tight, it'll push the air out as you go. Once you get to this point, just make sure everything's not sharp and it's kind of horizontal. Knock all your crud off as you go. Now, once we're at this point, you can see, that's why we wanted those straps underneath, because now, it's nice and easy. You just have to pull these up under the both and then back under the second one, pull him up, second strap, same story. 
go through both and then back up through one just like that and that's our swag all rolled up from here we go our bag got a plane doing some joy rides perfect timing chuck all our pegs in our bag got some extra little boot bags there as well they're pretty cool you can check them out and you can kind of just stuff it in both sides like that this is where a high quality swag bag makes all the difference one that actually fits because there's no struggle chucking it in and then once you're in like that make sure your your ropes are in throw your flap over and then just zip him up just a little bit like that tell you what this is excellent with rubber gloves on <laughs> all right and here we go that one doesn't want to play over here perfect there we go all done so stop that clock we are good to go that is our 23-0 Bandit 1100, all packed up. Well, there you have it, guys. That is the trip ready review of the 23-0 Bandit 1100 swag. What do you guys think about that? What do you think? Let me know in the description. Do you run different types of swags? Do you run a triple pole as well? What do you think? How do you rate the differences between the two if you've used both? For me, definitely prefer the triple pole, but definitely interested to hear what your thoughts are let me know in the comments down below as always i hope you found the video helpful and just a reminder i will link up in the video description below where you can pick one of these up for yourself if this is something you're after big thanks to the patrons of video show me how of course guys your extra support very much appreciated check out the channel for more trip ready reviews on all things 4x4 camping and adventure gear but other than that guys as always i hope that you have an amazing day and i will see you in the next video. Cheers, guys.